This video is sponsored by NordVPN. Get 75% of a free year plan and an extra month for free by visiting nordvpn.com slash nameexplain and by using the promo code nameexplain. It seems like jobs and working has always been key to human civilization. Even before civilization started to take shape as we see it today, we had members of our tribes taking on certain roles, hunters and gatherers as we hear so often. It is so often that people even become defined by their jobs. For some people it's quite literal however, as in English at least, we see many people with occupational surnames like Farmer, Baker and Smith. These surnames are remnants of the career their forebearers took on. And if you look at these surnames, you'll start to see how we actually form the names of our occupation. While it doesn't apply to every occupation name, a common way to create the name for a job is with derivation. In language terms, derivation is when we add a prefix or suffix to a word to create a new word. Not only does this create new words, but it can also change the word's class completely. As an example, the word wind is a noun, but by adding a y suffix, not only do we create a whole new word of windy, but we change the noun of wind into the adjective of windy. While this was a noun to an adjective, derivation can also be used to change words into other word classes too, and this is how we form a lot of occupation names. We take the main verb that best explains what you do at that job, then add a suffix to make it a noun. So if the main thing you do at your job is bake, then we take the verb of bake, add an er, and change it into a noun and the occupational title of baker. Of course, like I said, this isn't how every job title comes about, but a lot of the time they are formed like this. And this way of forming job titles has become so popular that as the world has evolved and new jobs have been created to fit our modern times, those new jobs need new names. And of course, one of the newest jobs that has taken the world by storm is this, what I'm doing right now, being a YouTuber. It's a job that many people are interested in taking up. The kids of yesterday who grew up wanting to be rock stars and actors are now eager to be YouTubers. Of course, I don't speak for all children when I say this. Now, let's look at this name of YouTuber. While there are other terms for people like myself, content creator online personality. I personally like the name I made up a while back, TubeSmith. But it seems that YouTuber is the name that has caught the most traction in the public eye. And there's something so odd with this name. It is a form of derivation. But what's interesting is that it doesn't change word class. YouTube is a noun and by adding an ER to make YouTuber it is still a noun. Though I guess YouTube could be seen as something of a verb too. If someone asked me what I do for a living and I simply said I YouTube, that doesn't sound too grammatically incorrect. My theory on why YouTuber became the dominant word for this career is due to the fact that it's short and it can specifically point to YouTube. Content creator as a term is a bit ambiguous and might not specifically point to YouTube for the not as clued up. Same for online personality. And while I guess the main verb for YouTuber would be something like create or make, a maker and creator are too still a bit ambiguous. YouTuber as a career name cuts straight to the point. Say if someone who makes YouTube videos for a living ends up on the news because that's never happened before. Thousands of people who don't really know much about online culture will be seeing them for the first time. Content creator creator and names like that might leave them a bit clueless. YouTuber however cuts straight to the point. If you don't know much about the internet other than how to google and use Facebook then hearing someone being called a YouTuber can bring you up to speed. I've heard of YouTube, I know people make a living off of it, so this must be one of them. So how did this name come about? Well I don't think we can find an exact moment it was coined. On Google Trends it seems that the name first started emerging around May 2006, but it really started to kick off in August 2013. Interestingly enough it was in November 2006 that Google brought YouTube, so they clearly knew where this whole thing was going to go. I guess the other big question here is who was the first person to be dubbed a YouTuber? By de facto, I guess it would be the user Jared who uploaded the first ever video, Me at the Zoo, to YouTube all the way back on the 23rd of April 2005. The person in this video is actually Jared Karam, one of the co-founders of YouTube. And while I guess yes, he is the first ever YouTuber, part of me feels like uploading just one video like this doesn't really count as being a YouTuber. Like I said, YouTuber is an occupation name. And at the time of making this video, he wasn't making a living off them. It's kind of like in the same way I personally wouldn't consider someone who uploads one unedited video to YouTube of their cat solely to share with their family as a YouTuber. I feel to find out the first true YouTuber, we need to find the first person or group of people who were building a following and earning money on the platform. It wasn't until 2009 that YouTube allowed their creators to make money and it was also in 2009 that the channel Fred hit 1 million subscribers, making it the first channel ever to do so. I'm guessing it was Fred who we could consider the first proper YouTuber as we know them today. However, that was 2009, 10 years later and the YouTube landscape has changed substantially and the name YouTuber has somewhat been overtaken by another 
good name to describe this way of making a living. Influencer. Now, what exactly is an influencer? Well, like many job names, it's easy to figure out just by seeing the name. An influencer is someone who influences. And while I may be speaking about YouTube in this case, a variety of people who use a variety of platforms can be influencers. People on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and even Snapchat. I myself am even considered an influencer. And speaking of being an influencer, I want to say thank you again to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. NordVPN is without the best VPN I've ever had the pleasure of using. I'm out and about working often and public Wi-Fi spots are far from the most secure of things. Luckily, Nord's thousands of servers with military-grade encryption in 60 plus countries means that no matter where I am connected in the world, my online life is secure. And with Nord, you can connect to a server in another country, allowing you to access the internet from that nation's standpoint. This can allow you to bypass countries with strict internet control like China and nations in the Middle East. And with Article 13 looming over internet users in Europe like myself, Nord will make sure you can enjoy browsing online like you always have. NordVPN are offering viewers of Name Explain the amazing deal of 75% off a three year plan and an extra month for free by going to nordvpn.com slash nameexplain, which will be down in the description, and by using the promo code nameexplain. So why not get your online life protected and make sure you can handle anything the internet may throw at you? Thank you again to NordVPN for sponsoring this video, and once again, that's nordvpn.com slash nameexplain and promo code nameexplain. So when did YouTubers start being called influencers? Once again, we can look at Google Trends and see that this term really started picking up traction in 2016. So like I said, it's a rather new term compared to YouTube as a term it is anyway. I remember first hearing the term when I started getting sponsorships and I was referred to as an influencer. So why does this name apply to YouTubers? Well, it's due to the following interest and respect that many YouTubers have cultivated. YouTube is a form of media unlike anything before it. It's more personal and can allow fans to become intimate even form something of a friendship with the creators. In the past we had actors and sports stars talking to us on sets and sports fields. Now we have people talking to us directly in their homes, sometimes even in their bedrooms, like we do with our friends. It doesn't get more close than that. This connection YouTubers can make with their audience gains them more than just a high subscriber count. It allows them to form opinions and share them with their followers and yes, influence them. Of course, advertisers realise these loyal audiences that YouTubers were building could be monetized allowing YouTubers to promote products and of course influence their audience to purchase them. This is part of something known as the attention economy, where attention is treated like a commodity. Someone or something with more attention on them from the public can wager higher prices for the attention and influence they have. What I find interesting however is that with YouTubers now being called influencers more and more often, it really changes what it means to be a YouTuber. As I said, most job names reflect the most important verb of that job, so if we treat YouTube as a verb like we mentioned earlier, then the job name YouTuber puts YouTube front and centre. However, with the name Influencer, it puts the Influencer verb at the front and centre. This implies a YouTuber's main job isn't to create fun and entertaining YouTube videos, but rather the main thing you'll be doing at this job will be influencing people, which I'm not saying is a good or bad thing, it's just a thing. And with this job title of Influencer, it implies there are different skills you need in the world of making YouTube videos. When I personally went into making videos, the skills I thought I would need were things like video editing, script writing, writing, presenting properly, all that sort of stuff. However, with being an influencer, there are a whole different set of skills you need. Skills in advertising a product and marketing it. Stuff I never expected I would need to know in this career. However, is this really a new thing? While the term influencer might seem like a recent invention, there have been influencers for years. In fact, the earliest kind of celebrity endorsement dates back to the 1760s, when the Wedgwood brand of pottery used a royal endorsement to sell their products. From then, we've had all kinds of celebrity endorsements, from David Beckham advertising pens to Iggy Pop selling insurance. Celebrities can even endorse outside the world of advertising. Celebrity endorsements in the world of politics is often seen, with people like Bruce Springsteen embracing with Barack Obama. Now, in these modern times, there seems to be a lot of heat on influencers. You can often hear people say how they don't get how these people earn up to millions for doing what seems like very little, with very little skill in place. However, the skill they have is to influence. Like we mentioned with celebrity endorsements in the past, the reason they work so well in advertising is because the celebrities that are endorsing things are liked for the skills they have. To be a celebrity endorser, it's kind of like a free tier progress. You do a skill well, people like you for it, and people pay you to promote something to the people who like you. Like with Beckham as we mentioned earlier, he played football well, people liked him due to this, Sharpie paid him to promote the pens to people who like him. Being an influencer is just the next evolution in celebrity endorsement. With influencers however, it seems like some feel these lines have been blurred, or at least the first step of the three have disappeared. It seems 
like with a lot of influencers, that is just steps two and three. People like them, so advertisers pay them to sell products to people who like them. However, a lot of these people do have skills, just not the traditional skills we think of when it comes to celebrity. Take video game YouTubers. While it might seem like they're getting paid handsomely just to play video games, their skill is to bring entertainment to people via video games. Or beauty vloggers, their skill is to use makeup in amazing ways, which people enjoy and like them for. You may know I enjoy Lego, just a tiny bit, and I watch a lot of Lego YouTubers. To others, it might seem crazy that these people make a living from building Lego. However, for me, their skill is building and talking about Lego, and they even influence me into what Lego sets I should and shouldn't buy. And even those who seem like they do nothing other than influence, well, I guess they have the most valuable skill to advertisers, the skill to solely influence. I guess even I must have some sort of skill as you guys seem to enjoy my videos. Well, I hope so anyway. And of course, a huge thank you to all the people who support me financially every month on Patreon. Without your support, Name Explain wouldn't exist in the form it does now. Thank you all so much.